Welcome to my basement. In this series of videos I'll be showing how to make an arcade that reads physical homemade cartridges. In the first video we looked at the brains of the operation, hardware and software, and tested out the prototype by launching a few games. If you haven't already seen part 1, it's recommended to pause this video now and view that part first. I usually start any build with the smallest possible prototype to see if I can get the critical things to work before I invest more time into a project. This is the approach I will use in this video as well. Hopefully by the end of this video you will be able to understand the parts needed, information on how you should set up the Raspberry Pi, how to wire the RFID reader to the Raspberry Pi, and how my custom software works and can be loaded onto the Pi. We start off by preparing the Raspberry Pi, which will be needed for the next steps of the project as well. Preparing the Pi often means uh, just loading some pre-made operating system onto the SD card for the Raspberry Pi. Luckily there are tools made available to do just this by the foundation, and we will utilize the Raspberry Pi imager. Since my project has been slightly delayed due to lumber issues, which will be covered in part 3 of this series, I guess. I ended up utilizing my Raspberry Pi 4 to create an MT32 Pi while I waited for this project to get back on track. Luckily I have other options than the Pi 4 and the next one on the list is a Raspberry Pi 400 sitting on my shelf. This is a Raspberry Pi that is integrated into a keyboard. Instead of an SD card this one is set up to load directly from an external SSD. However, this build will work equally fine on a normal Raspberry Pi using an SD card. To prepare the Pi I'm using Windows. The Raspberry Pi imager can be found on the official Raspberry Pi site under the software section. And here we download the Raspberry Pi imager. Normally I just use a simple SD card reader plugged into my USB port, but uh, since this build uses an external SSD, I just plug that into my available USB port instead. The imager software will recognize any removable disk and enable you to choose it from the tool. Choose uh, wisely however as everything on this disk will be overwritten. This uh, word of advice comes from a guy that in the early 20th century deleted the wrong disk partition from the command prompt and lost out on a whole lot of data that I never was ab able to fully recover. Once the RetroPie OS is uh, fully written to the disk or SD card, we are ready to boot it up. Adjust a few things and get the RFID reader connected so that we are able to read some NFC stickers. We don't want to start the emulation station automatically on boot because we won't be using it to select and start games in this setup. We want it to start up into the prompt, logged in as the Pi user. First we go into the Raspi config. Head over to system options and select number 5 which is boot auto login and number 2 which is auto login to the text console we then go back and reboot the system Back in the emulation station we open up the configuration again. We select the RetroPy setup. And since I'm not connected to the internet uh, just yet I get some errors when the RetroPy tries to update the latest setup script. Uh, but we can ignore these for now. We go to the configuration tools. and select auto start and select the option to boot to console and auto login as the Pi user. We then go back and select perform reboot. And after all that work we are finally booting straight into the console and logged in as the Pi user. 
Next, we will hook the system up to the internet and perform an update and installation of required dependencies for this project. The commands uh, to do this are listed in the readme file of this project and the link to the project can be found in the video description. Here we do an update and a full upgrade of the system. Then we ask the packet manager to clean up and we perform a reboot of the system. As listed in the readme file, this project is dependent on Python 3, so we install a development environment for Python 3 next. Python has its uh, own packet manager named pip, so we need to install that as well. Once uh, pip is installed, we use it to install the three Python libraries that the project uh, depends on. First, it's the mfrc5222 library, which is used to communicate with the rfid reader. Then we install termcolor, which is a library to get some color in the console prompt. Lastly, we install psutil. Uh, this is a library to get some hardware stats that we display while waiting for a cartridge to be read. Now that all the dependencies are installed, we are ready to download the scripts for the game central. You can retrieve the project files using git. First we create a directory called game central and then we use the git clone command. There are several tinkering projects in this repository, but you just need the Python files in the boot screen directory. Navigate to this one and copy the Python files to the root of the game central directory. You can delete the rest of the files. If you try to start the game central with the Python 3 now, it's a good chance that it will crash like this. The reason for this is that uh, by default the SPI interface is not enabled, and this, this is uh, needed for the RFID reader to work. We therefore go into the Raspi config, head over to the interface options, and enable the SPI feature. We exit the configuration utility and reboot the system. 
then we try to execute the game central python script uh, just to ensure that everything is working And as we can see, the script is actually running and waiting for a cartridge to be read. Now that the software is installed, the next step is to actually wire the RFID reader to the Raspberry Pi. I will link a few articles in the description of this video that I found helpful while researching this project. And one of them is from circuitbasic.com and it details how to wire the RFID reader and how to use the Python library as well. As I explained earlier, I ended up using my Raspberry Pi 400 for this project. So whatever Raspberry Pi you want to use, just ensure that the pinout is the same or adjust accordingly. It's uh, only 7 wires, so it's a pretty easy build hardware-wise. All the NTAG stickers I have has a unique ID. This uh, project utilizes this and given this ID and a mapping, the launcher can look up which game to launch given a specific ID. For this reason I have also included a tool to read and display the ID of the tag being read. As you can see the RFID ID is printed out when an end tag is being read, but we also get an auth error. We will uh, remove this warning in the library next as it is of uh, no concern for our usage. To remove this warning so that it does not interfere with the game central splash screen we need to edit the uh, mfrc522.py file. We search for auth to find the section we are interested in. We then remove the section that tests for and print out this error. Please note that the library might not give this error for other types of end tags, but uh, since I've seen other users of this library also reporting this, I thought it would uh, be wise to include it in this video and show you how to remove it so that it doesn't interfere with your installation of the game central. The project uses the ID of an end tag mapped to a game system and a game. This mapping has to be described in the game mapper.py file, which we see here. The variable you have to change is game map. As you can see here, here it's an ID followed by a list which contains the title of the game which is ski or die here and then the name of the system which is NES and then the path to the ROM file in this example the game map only contains uh, two game titles but you can add as uh, many as you like last remaining thing is to enable the game central to start when the system boots. This is uh, easily done by adding a few lines to the bash rc file of the system. These lines are added to the end of the file and uh, it's simply changing the directory to the game central and then executing the game central pi script. Once uh, this is done, we save the file and reboot the system. That's it! You have now installed and configured my game central project. The system is now awaiting an end tag to be read and mapped to a game as described in the game mapper.py file. We will uh, test the system by starting Ski or Die on the NES. Uh, once started, we will press both the start and select button to see if the emulator exits correctly and back to the game central. Then we will launch the same game again.
I'm sure that this video was a bit long and tedious, but I wanted to cover the details needed to make this setup work. Hopefully I did not scare you away from trying a project like this and also hopefully I covered all the necessary steps. Feel free to leave a comment or questions if you have any. And be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the third and final episode in this series as soon as I've gotten my lumber issues under control. Thanks for watching.